Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. How good our God is and how worthy he is to be praised on this Sunday morning. It is a blessing, amen, to be in the house of prayer once again. God has smiled on us and he has given us another chance at life, health, and strength. And I don't know about you, but I, I heard the writer says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in anybody besides me got a reason to give God praise today. Amen. Come on, wherever you are, in your living room, your bedroom, your daughter room, whatever room it is, in your workstation, come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Because I found out something about him. He is worthy to be praised. We honor the Lord today. And we thank God for all that he continues to do. Um, we praise him for um, this opportunity to come into the house of prayer once again. And we honor him before that. Listen, let's set some things in place at this time. If you're on my prayer line, go ahead now and mute the phone so that you will not uh, disrupt the flow of our worship today. Those of you who are on our media page, we pray that you will go in, like uh, our our broadcast today and of course we pray uh, that you will go ahead and share it as well as many shares as you possibly can and so that we can get the word out in this world and this nation we now reside in I'm grateful as always for those who help us with our virtual worship experience our praise team our officers of course, those are the, our staff personnel that are here today. They're going to help us uh, push our service and worship God, lead us in our worship this morning. So we honor them for that. They're going to come and bless us and lead us into uh, the, the presence of an almighty God. Let's hear from our praise team. I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be great? Won't it be great?
give every preacher a ring of word today, give every every singer a strong voice, give every worshiper the mind, God, to hear and to bless your name because you are worthy. You're worthy to be praised. God, we're praying for this world. We're praying for this nation. We're praying for uh, uh, God, the leadership of this world. And God, you will even move on their hearts. God, we're living in some perilous times. We've been living in some trouble sometimes. But God, oh God, we thank you today that God, you still sit high and you look low. You still have all power in your hand. And God, all we're asking today is God, you will have thine own way. Have thine own way. And God, everyone will know that when you, you move, that beneath our feet it is a burning hell and above our head is a smiling say, Have thine own way. And when you do go so, God, all will know that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Oh, God, have thine own way today. That God, you will heal those who are sick, heal those who are, are burdensome now. God, give strength to us today like only you can. And God, we're careful. Yes, when it's all said and done, be careful, God, when we can't do any more to give your name praise and glory. For we know that our journey can't be made without you. So we need to depend on you each and every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Lord, keep me. Lord, keep me.
soul of our feet, we pray that God, you will move like only you can. We pray, God, that you would have thine own way in the end, God. That God, when all has been said and done, God, you, God, will have all the glory. Now, because of our, our studying you speak, now because of our meditating, please, God, move. We pray that you would, God, help us to teach your Bible rather than vision and help us to preach for results rather than response. God, we need thee so that while we are preaching, God, you will get all the glory and your people will get the growth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Here it is. Let me get right to our assignment uh, this morning. It is in the Old Testament writing of, of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 32. Jeremiah chapter number 32. And we want to, if you will, home in on verses 6 uh, through 14 for our sermonic presentation this morning. Jeremiah chapter uh, number 32, home again on verse number 6 uh, uh, for our sermonic presentation. I'm, of course, uh, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have any other translation, it certainly will read differently. Uh, Jeremiah chapter number 32. Beginning with verse number six. Amen. When you found it, uh, you will find these words or similar words printed. It says, And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Behold, Han Han Hanon, the son of Shunem, your uncle, will come to you, saying, Buy my field, which is in An Anathoth, for the right of redemption is yours to buy it. Then Hanamon, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison according to the word of the Lord and said to me, Please buy my field that is in Anath, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours and the redemption yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that it was the word of the Lord. So I brought the field from Hanum and the son of my uncle who was in Anath and weighed out to him the money 17 shekels of silver. And I signed the deed and sealed it, took witness and weighed the money on the scale. So I took the purchase deed, both the, that which was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open. And I gave the purchase deeds to Barak uh, the son of Nero, son of Mish Messiah, and in the presence of Hanun, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witness who signed the purchase deed before all the Jews who sat in the court of the prison. Then I charged her before them, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, uh, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchase deed which is sealed and this deed which is open and put them in the earthen vessel that they may last many days. Please, if you will, home in with me uh, to verse number 14 again and, and, and for our sermonic our presentation. The text says, then uh, um, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchase deed which is sealed and this deed which is open and put them in an earthen vessel that they may last many days. Just for a little while this morning, I, I want to use what God even thought um, using these, the, that, that text in particular and the entire uh, chapter for context. I want to talk about an imperishable investment. An imperishable in Investment. Well, this new norm has, uh, that has uh, overcome us, this new norm that many believe would be over in a couple of weeks, now have us scratching our head. These times of uncertainty is about to push many of us over the edge while scrolling down my media page. I read many uh, troublesome posts that people are just tired of this phase of our lives. 
Those who have been fortunate enough to return back to work are going crazy. Um, who haven't rather been fortunate enough to, to go back to work or just going crazy um, 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 because there, there, there's not much to do. They're, they're having to look at, at the four walls. Not, if, if they're smart, they're not leaving their homes um, and to take the risk that so many others are taking because uh, the number of infections of uh, uh, people, uh, infected people, is rising to record breaking numbers. It is difficult, y'all, to deal with the isolation uh, that many of us are now facing. We have questions without answers. Um, we have questions without answers because uh, not only are we having to deal with isolation, there is this unrest in our nation because of the policing concerns. The, the focus question is how uh, is this all going to turn out? What will be the repercussions and how much longer is this going to go on? Another issue that weighs heavily, brothers and sisters, on the minds of many is the economy. How long will the nation be able to move at a small percentage of working people and many others are unable uh, to work? We are seeing, y'all, the effects that the shutdown is having on our investment and retirement plans. How long uh, will the economy downturn this a downturn last, and when can uh, we expect to get better? Wow, I can't answer uh, none of those questions, um, but I have been thinking about uh, my own personal investments. Wow, wow, I can't answer the questions about all of the uh, the negativity that is going on in our our world today. While I'm concerned with uh, financial investments, I also realize uh, that there is a greater investment we all need to make in this unusual time uh, in our lives. And I wish I had somebody in, in, in the building that would, would be real, just like I am this, this morning, and acknowledge the fact that you too are concerned, not worried, you are concerned with what's going on around you. You see the things, the effect of what's going on around you and many are not paying attention to the signs. Many are going and going on as business as usual. We we have we we we're wondering how long are these unusual unusual times going to last. We have a wonderful opportunity, y'all, to make a significant investment in ministry if we were only a turn in 
in our future. Now, now for some, yeah, um, I understand. I, I, I see you. Um, you. You may think that this text is a bit unusual, but it is very relevant for our current situation. And as we discuss the details within these verses, I, I pray that you would recognize that our imperishable investments are lie within the Lord. Notice, here it is, the first thing, lest I hold you too long, the first thing that leaps out to me in verse number two, you still have your Bibles, because all I try to preach is Benjamin, rather than uh, preach your Bible, rather than Benjamin. If you got your Bibles open, it's in verse uh, number two. Um, um, it, 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 it is an imperishable investment because of Jeremiah's devotion. I wish I had some help in here. Somebody ought to write that in your comment book but, but, uh, box that so I know that you're following along with me. You, you ought to write devotion, devotion, devotion. It's right there in, in verse number two. Um, here it is. The, the Bible says, for then the king of, of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Jeremiah, the prophet, watch this, was shut up in the courts of the prison, which was in the kings of Judah's house. Watch this. We find that Jeremiah was confined to the prison. The leadership in Judah uh, did, did, did not like the message uh, that Jeremiah was preaching. Uh, Jeremiah had been imprisoned uh, for his faith and devotion uh, to the Lord. I'm, I want to pause, press pause right there long enough to tell somebody that many of us um, are unlike Jeremiah, if you will. Uh, we, we, we're, we're compromising God because uh, we don't want to be in prison in this world because the world will cause us to, yeah, 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 be straddled with this. The world will cause us to have us tipping and sipping uh, when we say that we're on the Lord's side. We we, we, we really don't act like we're on the Lord's side. But Jeremiah, watch this, he's in prison now because of his stand for the Lord. And I'm wondering today, in this world that we're now living in, is there any real believers amongst us that will stand on the promises of God, even though the winds of life is not uh, conducive to our movement, even though things are not going our, our way? Is there any Continue uh, to invest in God, and, and you 
want to remain devoted to his will and his way. Um, the Bible, can I give you a text message right quick? Uh, the Bible records in Acts chapter number 27 and verse number 25. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just that, as he told me to do. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but my devotion is in Christ Jesus. I, my devotion is in the one who stepped back on nothing and caused something to come into us. This is my Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but I'm holding to Jesus' name. Oh, Christ, uh, the solid rock I stand. Uh, all of the ground is sinking sand. I'm wondering today, am I the only believer today that has a made up mind uh, that you're going to remain devoted up to the God uh, who's able to do all? This morning, I, I got to hurry, but here it is. Uh, not only, um, 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 stay with me, uh, is this uh, an investment or an imperishable investment because um, of, 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 of the devotion I see in the text? But watch this, it's an imperishable investment because of our descendants. It's going to get rough right on him, right through him. But, but look at me, if, if you will, in verse number seven and eight, y'all still got your Bibles open, I hope. Um, um, the Bible says, Behold, Hannah, the, the son of Shem, your uncle, will come to you saying, By my field, which is in Anathul, and for the right of redemption is yours to buy. Here it is. Then Hannah, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, and according to the word of the Lord, and said to me, Please buy my field that is in Anathul, which is in the country of Benjamin for the right of inheritance is yours and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that it was the word of the Lord. Can I tell somebody? Because when you look at the text, Jeremiah had the right of inheritance. This was his heritage. Stay with me. He had the right of redemption because his kindred, therefore, uh, the right to redeem the land. He had an obligation to, to family and descendants. There is a heritage Christian fellowship as well as you that are listening to me uh, from other ministries. There is an inheritance, uh, a, a heritage that we, we ought to hold on to. We must invest up in our families. If we are to continue this heritage, uh, we, we owe it to our children and grandchildren to make an investment in them. We ought to, we ought to bless them uh, with some type of knowledge. I, I know that we're now living in an age where it's more common for us uh, to be partners with our children rather than be parents to our children. I, 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 I know it's going to get rough. See how quiet y'all got on right now? I, I know we're living in a time when uh, parenting is a theme of the past. Uh, we let our children uh, fend uh, for themselves. But I'm Yes, 
minutes. Listen, many of us, let's not hold you too long. Many of us are upset about the actions of prayer in the school. And we're upset about them not being able to display the Ten Commandments in certain hallways. But what about the absence of prayer in the house? Yeah. What, 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 what? You, you, you don't need to wait till you get to the school to pray. Come to the babies before they leave the house. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, you want to be praying. When you walk out your door in the morning, you, you want to be praying.
the cities. We need to invest in our district. And finally, we need to invest in our destiny. Y'all want to write them down. Those, those, those pretty good points right there. If I, wouldn't, if I hadn't read them down already, I probably would have wrote them down uh, so I can talk about them a little bit later on. But verse 14 shows us our, our investment in our destiny. Here it is. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchase deed, which is sealed, and this deed, which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may last many days. Here it is, y'all. Um, 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 uh, 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 uh. Jeremiah made an investment he most likely would never benefit from. Stay with me. His destiny was important to him and and, 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 and he makes an investment in his future. Listen, I'm interested in the deeds recorded in the in, in this purchase. Um, one was sealed and one was open. And I believe we can apply this to different kinds of investments. Watch this. The open deeds represents an investment we likely see the results of uh, in our own future. Can I show it to you? Because when you are a dedicated Sunday school teacher and uh, uh, somewhere in the near future, you see that, that pupil of yours uh, that sat in your class now come down the aisle and give God their heart and the preacher their hand. That that deed represents uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a result right, uh, of, of that open Charles E. Coleman, and I realize today that I'm standing 
on the blessing or rather the work that they invested in this church. Yeah, they may not see all that this church can be, but they invested that you and I may have a place of worship. Can I help somebody as I go to my seat? I need to tell you that today I close my message that we ought to make yeah, some imperishable investments. Huh? What are those investments, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. Huh? We ought to invest in our faith. Huh? We ought to be devoted to God huh? and let the dying world know huh, that it's our God huh, who we serve. Huh? We ought to be devoted to Him huh? because we found out something about Him. Huh? Can't nobody have to live in Jesus. Huh? Can't nobody have do we like the Lord? Huh? We ought to be an investor in God. Huh? We ought to be devoted to Him. Huh? Because when huh, the going gets rough, huh? when uh, the rough gets going, huh? time, uh, uh, yeah, gets hard. Huh? Trials uh, overcome us. Huh? Tragedy uh, on every side. Huh? I double dog. Huh? Dare you today huh? to hold on uh, just a little while longer huh? and stay. Huh? Close to the cross, huh? because if you hang on in there, huh? if you remain devoted to God, huh? He will. Won't He do it? Huh? He will remain devoted to you. Huh? Not only brothers huh? and my sisters huh? are you to be huh? devoted to God, huh? but you want to have, huh? have uh, an investment in your descendants. Huh? You want to cover your children. Huh? You want to bless your children. Huh? You want to encourage your children. Huh? You want to invest in them huh? so that we uh, may continue uh, to have a leg of the, the stand on. Huh? Not only how huh, we all have huh, an imperishable investment huh, because of our devotion, huh, because of our divinity, the descendants, huh, but we want to invest uh, in our community. Huh? We want to have uh, 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 a plan uh, for our community. Huh? Not worrying uh, about gentrification, huh, but not worrying. And if you do that, I, I believe uh, God will. Yes, He will. Uh, he'll make everything all right. Uh, and uh, if you do all of that, uh, I believe uh, you made uh, a substantial uh, investment uh, in your destiny. Uh, can nobody uh, do me like Jesus? Uh, can nobody uh, do me like the Lord? Uh, yeah. Uh, in your destiny. What is your destiny? I've got a building not made by hands. Eternal in the heaven. What is your destiny? I'm running. I'm running. I'm running for my life. And if anybody ask you what's the matter with me, you ought to tell me
investment in you. God, you've been good to us. So cause us to be devoted to you. You've been good to us. So cause us to be concerned about our descendants. God, you've been good to us. Help us to be concerned about our destiny. And God, if you do these things, we will secure our destiny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, for those who are even unsaved, but they have now an opportunity. Come give the preacher your hand. More importantly, give you their heart. Any unsaved, because of the declaration of your word, pray to God you give them an opportunity. Come before time is too late and make their impressionable investment in the one who is able to sustain them. We pray these blessings in Jesus' name. His name we pray. Amen. I praise him. It's going to come. Lord, I do the business, oh, and we will Lord. pause for a moment of invitation. Lord, I do the business, oh, this is one of the songs that will come. Lord, oh, you need to make an impression. You need to make Lord, an impression. You can do that today. You can come. Lord, I do the business, oh, Lord. You can come because God has made it no, to you. Will you come to God? Except Jesus Christ will be saved. Facebook and we remain there for at least three days. 
days that we will stream it live on Facebook. And we encourage your prayers. Amen. That's what they need. Amen. The most because they already know that we are sending and supporting them uh, through these hours of bereavement. Brothers and sisters, let's look forward to our district congress of Christian education July 21st to the 23rd. Three nights. Um, you can check out the webpage fecbaptist.org for the class selections. Listen, we are honored to be the president of our district congress, one of the largest congress of Christian education in the one of the largest in the state of Florida, third largest in the nation. And we're honored, amen, to lead this ministry. And we're hoping that you come and connect with us as we have a virtual district congress of Christian education. Amen. We invite you to do this. Please, ma'am, please, please uh, um, look to that that uh, source to, for class selections. We want to try even Christian fellowship to have a link on our webpage. Hopefully our webpage will be up this week. Again, we were under some construction, doing some reconstruction to our webpage. Hopefully it will be up uh, this week. And then you can go on our webpage and link it to the Florida East Coast webpage. Hey, we're gonna close in prayer. Let me say this, I would love you as the pastor of the Christian Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. The grace of our Lord, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest rule about it. Leave our people now henceforth and forevermore. Amen.